Hello and welcome to Building the Premier Accounting Firm. I'm your host, Roger Connect, and this is a podcast dedicated to owners of accounting firms, bookkeeping practices, tax firms, to actually help them build the premier accounting business in their area. In doing so, each and every week, we have topics that range in subject matter from mental health, marketing, sales, client onboarding, and so much more. And today, we're going to be covering things regarding technology, such as e-commerce and so forth. I've got an amazing guest. His name is Tom Rossetti, and he's going to help us have a conversation about a variety of things that I'm sure are going to interest you. Tom Rossetti happens to be bringing technology solutions to the marketplace now for over 35 years, including roles with MetLife, Micros, Aloha, and Intuit. He's been working within the accounting bookkeeping ecosystem for more than 20 years and developed what is now known in QuickBooks as a, a solution provider program and or uh, basically developed, I should say, the QuickBooks Solution Provider Program back in the early 2000s while working it into it. He's now with BookKeep and is uh, basically offering a number of things to us today that I think are going to be extremely relevant. So, Tom, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is going to be quite a bit of fun. So first, first things first, give me an idea of how it is that you got brought into the accounting profession. Well, it's... Uh, by accident, honestly, I, uh, honestly I, uh, <laughs> I, I've been in the point of sale business, retail and restaurant point of sale since 1986. And I lived in Tucson, Arizona. I had a dealership there. And one of my customers, um, a point of sale customers had a, um, got a job at Intuit. Intuit has a big call center or had a big call center in Tucson, Arizona. Uh-huh. And he, uh, he took this great job. They were just, uh, into was just getting ready to start selling their QuickBooks point of sale retail solution. And it went live, uh, I believe it was like the third or fourth of January in 2002. And, uh, the next day, uh, his name was Steve. Steve called me and said, Hey, can you come down here for a couple of days and teach us about retail point of sale? Cause we're selling point of sale now and we don't really know anything about it. <laughs> and so um, I went down. I thought, well, I'll spend a couple of days down here. They're good billable hours, and Intuit always pays. And so I uh, I went down there and thought I'd spend a couple of days, and that turned out to be 10 years. I love it. I love it. Now, obviously, point of sale, that's different today than it perhaps was back then. Um, Technology has yes. played a big role in it. I know there's a lot to do now with e-commerce. Uh, real yes. quickly, just tell me, What's different from a point of sale, you know, today and how it actually relates to e-commerce? Well, especially today, and there's actually another tie-in, and, and I'm happy to tell that story. Um, everything is really e-commerce today, because if you think back to the dark days of COVID, every restaurant was trying to get you to order online, and every every DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats driver um, was delivering, you know, food from... Applebee's or food from your local pizza deliver pizza place or 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 you know wing shop or sandwich shop. So everything really became e-commerce. And today there's no way to really separate that. You you if you if you own a restaurant, if you own a retail store and you know even Joe's bead shop or um you know Sally's surf shop on the beach, they're going to have a, a e-commerce component. They're going to have a web presence and, you know, folks are going to order from all over the world um, in your little bead store. So by virtue of the fact that everything now has an e-commerce component, a bookkeeper or accountant has to be cognizant of that that component of their client's business. Whether they want to be in e-commerce or not, um, they're in e-commerce. I mean... If if I had a dollar for every account or bookkeeper who said to me, "Oh yeah, I, I don't work on e-commerce clients. I I give them to somebody else," I I would be rich. Well, so what's the aversion or reluctance of the accounting professional to actually take on e-commerce clients? Do you think? It, because it's very complicated. <laughs> okay. And 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 it, honestly, if if our CEO and founder Jason Rickelson was here, he would say quite bluntly. Because the the e-commerce vendors, the Shopify's and the um, WooCommerce and the Squares and and um, all of those e-commerce vendors don't really care about accountants. They don't care how much harder it is 
for a, a, a bookkeeper to do their books every day for a client that has, for instance, they use Square in their brick and mortar store mm -hmm. and they use Shopify for their online sales. And with Shopify, you have a, uh, you can pay with PayPal or you can pay with, you know, Shopify pay or what I think they call it, Shopify cash or the, those, those folks, PayPal, Shopify, Square, they don't really consider what the the day-to-day -day work that a bookkeeper has to do just to provide correct numbers for their client. And and the client, honestly, hate to say this, but the client doesn't really care how much work the bookkeeper has to do to give me give, give me my right numbers. Yeah. I'll give you a good example, just one that I've recently experienced just this year, is we have an online presence, obviously, and with our e-commerce we have uh, basically one platform and uh, they chose to um, white label the merchant services that we were originally using. And so they then forced all the users of this platform to then migrate to the white labeled version of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the merchant service. So now all of a sudden I had two merchant account services, one mm -hmm. that I was utilizing in this platform and elsewhere, and now a second that's the exact same merchant, but it's been white labeled. And so I've got two e-commerce platforms that I'm trying to manage for payment services, but it's literally the same provider. It's just one was white labeled and it just creates this accounting nightmare because I'm having to now log into and so forth, this same platform but I can't merge them. I, ca I can't do anything. So it does create some little, some chaos for us sure. internally as we're trying to now manage our own accounting with the monies coming in from different sources. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the other complicated and difficult part of this is unless, unless you understand the, the way that vendor works, PayPal or Shopify or whoever it is, and understand how the fees come out of those transactions, you're never really going to balance. For for instance, okay, it, just take a simple square. You know that you, you see square. Everybody uses square. I mean, you go to the the swap meet or something, and you give the guy your credit card to buy some, you know, painting or or whatever, and he does your transaction on square. Well, th that square transaction was a hundred dollars. But you don't see $100 in your bank account. You're going to see $96. And because $4 of that is a fee. But if you use Square and got a capital loan from Square, they're going to take their payment out of that $100 before they deposit that money into your bank. Right? So mm -hmm. then that $100 sale becomes $70 in your bank and $4 in fees and $20 to, to your loan payment. And another dollar for some kind of subscription fee that that Square has dreamed up. So unless you know that you're going, you do a hundred dollars in sales, and you would think, hmm, okay, so I'll have a hundred dollars in my checking account in two days or three days. But that's not how it that's not how it works. And and there are so many fees attached to to the the payment side and and the different um, platforms that are providing e-commerce solutions. And, and, and unless you're using a, a solution like Bookkeep, um, you'll never really know how much money you have in the bank. Well, one of the things that I'm liking about your illustration there is the fact that as a business owner, I think this is just a common struggle that small business owners mm -hmm. face, even larger ones for that matter, because what's happening is you're having transactions go on and you're just presuming because cash flow is such an integral part of any business, you're just presuming that the cash flow is occurring. And yet you go check and the monies that you hope to see, expected to see, just aren't where you thought they would be. And that's where the accounting comes in. That's why we have job security. That's why we do what we do as a profession is we try to answer these questions and manage where these funds are going and perhaps even get involved to the point where we point them to less costly solutions, more efficient process, right. efficient processes. So I like it. Um, let me let me change gears on you here just a little bit. I know that one of the things that you're heavily involved in is community and building a community within the accounting and bookkeeping workspace. Uh, I know that's really based on like partnerships and so forth, but I, I wanted to begin by asking, what do you 
What do you think people understand the word community to mean and why is it so important? And then we'll talk about partnerships. Well, it's my belief that if you have a strong community and you have folks of a like mind, so I, when, when we started the Retail Solution Provider Program at Intuit, we started with six members. I mean, we could have had our first conference in a minivan. But those six folks, their, our mission was to help all of those folks do a better job and, and, and get one more client a month, two more clients a month by helping each other because I certainly don't know everything. So what happens is, uh, you know, Bill, who's one of our, our community members, has a question and, and he poses that question to the group and somebody answers the question and says, well, this is what I do. And then you start to build your best practices, not in a vacuum, but in, in a place where you have a lot of folks who are supporting each other. And, and if you look at some of the more influential and more successful um, members of the, especially the Intuit community, um, they were, they were cultivated and, and they were mentored by folks early on that allowed them to grow into the big successful firms that they, that they are now. Um, you know, and I, and I can, I can relate this. I, Dawn Brolin is a great friend of mine. She's been, a, a very influential part of the Intuit community. Uh, she started, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago as a, as a small bookkeeper. She went to a, uh, a, a training session and met one of the members of our original solution provider group from Intuit, Leslie Capacetti. She had a great conversation with Leslie. You know, Leslie was part of the writer's network for Intuit and everything. And, uh -huh. and Dawn said to her, wow, I'd really like to, to, be more like you. How do I get there? So Leslie helped her get started. And now Dawn is one of the top speakers. She speaks everywhere. She did three or four sessions at the QuickBooks Connect, which was last week here in Las Vegas. And, and, and now Dawn has a whole group of folks who she's mentoring and she's helping grow into a bigger and better firms. Yep. And, and that's what community does. If if we're if we're helping each other, then everybody everybody gets better. And as a vendor to support that community, you you have to be very cognizant of of the help that you provide. Not just hey, we have a great product, and and talk to those those members. Hey, do you have any deals for us today? How many sales did you do this month? But to to help them grow their own business so that they can help other folks in the community, especially those that are just starting out, to get better at what they do. And, and that's really, the community is the strongest tie we have to each other. So what I'm hearing, and, and I'm going to describe this in two different ways. I think there's, from what I'm hearing, two types of communities. There is definitely a community of accounting professionals amongst themselves collaborating together and just best practices, what's working and so forth. But then there's another community of the various providers, the various tools and resources that are available to the accounting community, kind of interacting with and providing a platform or space for the accounting professionals to come and have access to these partners, to have access to these players and learn from them, uh, basically, as they provide resources and so forth. And I'm going to go, first of all, to the accounting community, just peer to peer, uh, recently, I've been involved with some roundtable discussions with owners of accounting firms, and I've had some amazing conversations where once people kind of get away from the idea that they're talking to their competitor, let's say, they're easily able to open up and just in a very safe environment, share best practices and more importantly, the struggles that they're facing. And it was nice mm -hmm. in the roundtable to have individuals actually share suggestions to peers that were other places in the country of what it is that they have found to be helpful things that they have found to be important as they've grown their businesses and somebody else at a similar stage or maybe behind them learns from that and is able to express gratitude simply because of the fact that 
they've gotten some insights from someone that's been there, done that, and they like that. And I think the same is true when you're looking at the providers. The providers listening to the accounting community actually find out what needs exist and they're able to adapt their product, their platform or whatever it is to the needs of those that are actually using their systems. And so lots of good things here. I I like the idea of community. I've seen it benefit in a variety of ways and I see that's helpful. Tell me about partnerships. What comes to mind when you think of partnerships? Well, let me just go back for one second. It's interesting because you, 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 you hit on two things that are, are very dear to me. And one is when you, when you talk about the, the, the partner, the community of peers and the, the, the uh, access to round tables and it ties into the, to the partnerships, but I want to, we bookkeep, we host a couple of different round tables. Um, it's not host, you know, we don't drive it, we don't own it, but we've sponsored it. And that those round tables are allow exactly what you're talking about. So there's no vendor pressure. We, we don't actually, they don't allow salespeople in to this round table because we don't want to be, have them to be selling product to them. You know, there's a time or place for that, but those round tables aren't it. And you're exactly right. If you if you're around the folks and you're able to talk about your issues and you're able to talk about the things that work, and then what you're going to find is that you, as the the accounting firm owner, the bookkeeping firm owner, will have more confidence in general because you know things to look out for, and that's really what, as a good vendor we all owe to the community is to is to help them not just get business from them well and that leads into what makes a good partner and uh, in in my humble opinion a, a good partner is not just the the product i mean we have a great product don't get me wrong our product is fabulous it helps hundreds of accountants every day do their work better and uh, and gives them more time to do other things because if you look at the research especially since covid many people in the bookkeeping slash accounting field are leaving and part of the reason they're leaving is because they get fatigued from all of this mundane tasks that they have to do over and over, the repetitive tasks that they have to do over and over, just to, which is basically, if you break it down, what a bookkeeper does is the same task over and over again with different facts and figures and, and, and different inputs. And, but those folks all aspire to be something more. They want to be, be advisors to their clients, not just their bookkeepers. And with, with the right vendors, that that can happen. But we, we take a, an approach with um, our bookkeepers and accountants who we work with that we are one part of your tech stack. And, you know, again, we have many folks who, who have uh, a sub-network of bookkeepers that work for them and rely on them for advice that will dictate what tech stack uh, a bookkeeper or accountant is going to use because they know that's what works. And now we're seeing that those accountants and bookkeepers are dictating to the client what tech stack that client's going to use in order to work with that bookkeeper. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that I'm also seeing is just that. The accountant is the role of the accountant is changing to the point that it's now becoming, I feel, the um, the expert, if you will, as to what tech stack, let's use that term just simply because you've been saying it, what tech stack their clients need to be considering as they run their business. And oftentimes these resources are beyond the accounting. They oftentimes are things that complement, you know, if you're niching into certain space, you brought up, uh, we brought up e-commerce earlier, 
all of a sudden what happens is you become that go-to expert for that industry as to not just the accounting, but other interfaces that that client should be considering as they're running their business simply because these technologies start to intertwine and communicate with one another. And as they do, they just make everything flow that much easier if they're integrated properly. But the role of the accountant oftentimes becomes almost a troubleshooting aspect where you're trying to now make sure this one integrates with the other and your expertise is more than just debits and credits. The expertise mm -hmm. of the accounting professional now becomes how do I get this information to communicate or these systems to communicate to get the information my client needs to run their business. And it's beyond just the PL and and balance sheet type information. It's, it's the numbers of sales, it's the closing ratios, it's all these other things that are integral to the success of the business. And this is what the accountant can start getting involved in to help their client with. So I, I really do like that. So let's talk a little bit about now the evolution. You've been doing, this is one of the things I was excited to have you on the show for. You've been doing this for so many years like myself where we, we've seen change in the accounting profession. Things are no longer the same. There isn't a visor that, that an accountant wears. We don't have an armband on our, on our um, arm and we're not using the abacus anymore. So things have evolved where do you believe the accounting profession is going to be in the coming years? What's on the horizon that might be changing, especially from a software, AI, blockchain type uh, approach to the accounting process? Well, you know, that that's a very interesting question, because if you do look at how how things are are evolving, one of the things that you'll notice is the more <laughs> the more reliant you become on technology, the more reliant you become on that vendor or that partner. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so the, the, the tight knit relationship you have with your vendor is going to become even more important. And so, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, if you look at, things like what we do our our product is designed to run automatically for you so you don't have to you don't have to pull any data it, it gets done automatically if we can automate one more step to that then it's going to be easier for you to do your job right yeah i mean obviously the automation is one of the things that's become so helpful I, I definitely want to say that maybe five or more years ago, I think there was an aversion or a reluctance to automate a lot of things. In the accounting profession, it wasn't uncommon to hear people say that from a bookkeeping perspective, is my job becoming obsolete? Is the bookkeeper going away? Am I no longer going to be recording transactions? And here we are, we're realizing that the role of the bookkeeper is integral still to the process. They haven't been replaced. And I would even go so far as to say the job description has changed slightly to include your familiarity with certain platforms, your expertise to integrate these platforms into your clients to actually help them with, as you're mentioning earlier, the e-commerce, for example. Here are all these transactions happening in a digital world. How do you take advantage of it? You know, I wouldn't say long, uh, long gone are the days of opening the till, counting out the till, and and uh, dealing with petty cash and so forth. You know that 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 still exists, but so many more of the transactions now are digital. They're credit card, debit card. They're um, mm -hmm. like you were saying earlier, PayPal and so forth. It's the Google Pay. All of these things are evolutions in the in the business world that we've had to had to adapt to as accounting professionals, and I dare say we're doing a very good job of it. But that's because as accounting professionals, we finally embrace the fact that technology is our friend. But at the same time, I do know that there are accounting professionals that left the accounting profession that retired, retired early, just because they didn't want to be adopters of this. And it's where these younger accountants, bookkeepers, tax preparers are really excelling and doing so well because they're befriending the technologies that are uh, basically coming on the market. So this, this is all yeah. good stuff. Um, l let me ask you this. Uh, you, you've been involved with accountants. What do you find is a hesitancy or a reluctance to embrace a new technology? Well, I think that one of the, the biggest challenges we as a, a, a vendor 
who service the accounting and bookkeeping community we face is the fact that every day there is a new piece of software that, you know, it's the new shiny penny and it gets the attention and, and they may have good marketing or they they may give away cool swag at a trade show or, you know, they, they make great TikTok videos. I'm not really sure what that is, but I hear that the young people talk about TikTok a lot. Um, uh, but so they, they get a lot of attention. They get a lot of people who, who um, maybe – try to use it or the, these companies will will pay for some influencers to to influence the community and things like that and if you if you don't understand the dynamics of the accounting marketplace and the accounting community and and you don't realize that it takes a very long time it takes a lot of resources and a lot of hand holding and a lot of kissing babies and and um, you know, attending shows and, and people have to know who you are. And well, these new companies come on board, they, they get a couple customers, they get a couple accounting firms that like what they do. Those vendors go out of business. And now the accounting firm is, is stuck with the, their reputation is tarnished because these new solution companies show up they buy into it as an accounting firm. They, the, the solution goes out of business. Now the accounting firm looks a little bit silly, right? Because they haven't vetted the vendor. Um, we see this all the time, right? And, and that's really, I think, the biggest challenge for us as vendors is to get the accounting firms and the bookkeeping firms to realize that we're here for the long haul. Right, we're we're kissing the babies. We're going to the shows. We're giving away the swag. We're doing demos. We're doing all the things that that you have to do as a vendor to to get those accounting um, bookkeeping type um, clients. And we're going to be here for a long time. Well, you're bringing up a question that I think everybody wishes they could answer. I mean, you're definitely foreseeing the future and in doing so uh, trying with your your best efforts to do the due diligence to figure out okay what solution is going to be the right one I, i'd like to think everybody in it and i mean everybody would exist forever but not only does a business uh, struggle to be relevant continually but at the same time you have to obviously have the uh, demand and so forth you're describing uh, obviously obviously a platform that would stick around for some time and that's the hope the hope is is that the accounting profession can you know lean on a platform and expect that it will always be there but i would also dare say that things do change and improve sometimes the platform becomes irrelevant not because it, it became insolvent it's just because <laughs> sometimes the technology, the systems, the processes made it antiquated. But anyways, I, let me go to yes. another let me go to another question. The, the thing I wanted to know is with regards to your experience, the accounting professionals, as they, like you were saying earlier, shiny objects, consider what to do next. Do you have any suggestions from a tech stack philosophy of, what should they be first integrating or utilizing in the firm? Uh, how to assess what to do next? Um, how to how to decide whether or not this is the right thing to be doing for the client? Is there a, a checklist, a process that you found helpful for an accounting profession to determine what's that next step technologically? Yeah, you know that's a that's a tough question because every firm is going to look at at, at their their roadmap a little bit different, but you know if 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 you're a an accounting firm or um, you know you you're well, obviously if you're doing taxes there's a whole separate that's a whole another road to go down, but you have to determine I think first you know what piece of software what technology are you going to use to help run your practice. Right. What practice management? What um, uh, document management? Or is there one that maybe ties those two together? What communications 
vehicle are you going to use? Are you going to email your clients? Are you going to text your clients? Are you going to, what, what are you going to use to communicate with your clients? And, and then you have to start to look at, are you using QuickBooks as an accounting platform? Are you using Zero? Are you, you know, Sage, uh, if you, NetSuite, uh, Zoho Books, which is um, up and coming, uh, FreshBooks, uh, what, what, accounting platform are you going to use and and how are you going to make those pieces work in in tandem and then i think the second level of that is once you have what you're going to use internally to build your practice then you have to look at what and again we'll use the word tech stack but what solutions you're going to provide for your clients what payroll what sales tax um you know what um HR, uh, what, you know, for instance, data transfer tool, what are you going to, you know, what are you going to use as a, a recommended e-commerce solution or a point of sale solution in brick and mortar? And you want to, you want to have, especially on those last two, you know, when, when you look at when a business starts 25 years ago, 30 years ago, you decided you were going to open a business. The first thing you did is you, you went to your bank. The second thing you did is you got your accountant set up, right? So me, as a point of sale vendor, I had a great network of accountants who would refer business to me when, when, you know, when Roger, when you came to your accountant and said, Hey, I want to open up a, a restaurant. The, the accountant would say to you, okay, so you're going to need a great point of sale system. You're going to need you know, uh, uh, scheduling, you're going to need gift cards, you're going to need X, Y, and Z, call Tom. The accountant is the very essence of how that business is actually going to get set up. So it behooves you to have a strong network of vendors that you can call on to help that client get set up the best way. And what happens is, the more familiar you are with, for instance, let's just say Spot On, which is a, a restaurant and retail point of sale. If if you have a lot of clients who use Spot On, you're going to know more about Spot On, not because you're going to do tech support for the POS, but you're going to understand where those numbers come from when you're looking at them. Um, payroll, same thing, you know. It, it, so you have to first set up your own practice and internally have the tools that you want. Then that second level is how you're going to interface with the clients and what tools you're going to use to do that. And then you, you, by virtue of those two things, you've really automated your business, whether you want to or not. I mean, you, you know, I, I don't believe in today's day you can take a, a green columnar pad knock on somebody's door and say i'm going to do your bookkeeping with a pencil <laughs> yeah those days pretty i think sure are, you right. right yeah you're pretty gone on that well let, let me jump in here because i i think what i'm hearing is very wise information for the listener to actually consider because with all those shiny objects i think there is a, a simple way to assess what you should be doing and so the advice i'd, I'd share in addition to what you've said is you first of all have to uh, decide, is this a process that you're already doing in the company that you're now trying to automate? And in doing so, it's very clear what's working already, and you're trying to find a solution that duplicates or improves the process that you already have internally. I think that's one of the first things is to avoid this shiny object syndrome of that looks fun and interesting. Well, are you already doing it or trying to do it now? If you aren't already doing it, I don't know how necessary it is because you aren't already doing it. So typically when you integrate a, a, a solution, it should in fact be just that. It's a solution to something you're already experiencing. The second thing I would add is whether or not it's client facing, something that they're going to interact with, or is it internal? Who's going to be the ones that benefit from, use, and be impacted by it? And that's, I think, a very important question to be asking when assessing what to do with that tech stack item that you're considering. And then once you've made the decision that this is the next step that you're going to now implement in the company and the next platform you're going to roll out, whether it's internal or external, 
is you have to make the commitment, in my opinion, to go all in. And that's to say, if you're going to pay the money, if you're going to actually implement it, you've got to become the expert in it. Go through the provided trainings that they provide, go through the different support integrations that they offer, work with your account rep that may come with the uh, actual use of the platform. All of this to make sure that you're actually going all in and fully doing it and provide yourself the time, a month, a quarter to do this. It's not going to happen in a day. And you've got to give yourself that time to actually learn the platform, implement the platform, become an expert with it and integrate it with everything else that's already in place. The next thing I would definitely say is be willing to put the investment into your staff to make sure that they get trained on it. They likewise need to be experts just to force it upon our employees and assume that they're just going to learn it for so many of them, it's just a job. So you've got to give them the bandwidth to actually learn it and integrate it. And really, I would caution before you take on another uh, item to add to your tech stack, make sure the last one is fully integrated. Don't go from one to the next to the next without fully integrating the first. And then the last thing I'd say about the tech stacks that are client facing is be mindful of you're going to have a number of clients that are going to be reluctant and hesitant to, to utilize it. Uh, they may not want what they're doing. You've got to be prepared for that because just because you bought it and say it's the best thing for them to do, whether it's for their benefit or yours, you've got to be mindful of the fact that they just may not want to. They're trying to run a business and you're asking them to do something that they weren't planning on doing anyway. So all those things are excellent considerations when you're considering this new adoption of a technology. But best advice don't go from one to the next without becoming the expert and fully integrating it first. So just some good things there. I, I agree. And I would, I would add to that, that the, the technical solutions that you deploy for your accounting firm, especially the client facing ones should not disrupt or change the workflow that that client is, is doing now. It, it should be a, a, a simple transition from, and again, for instance, from paychecks to ADP um, as your payroll provider, there shouldn't be a lot of workflow changes that the client is going to have to do to do that, or they're they're just not going to do yeah. it. Either that right? or simplification. It's It's got to be, right. this is going to be a lot easier now. So that's right. really good. Hey, I'm going to wrap this up by doing some things here. I've got a, some, uh, something exciting for our listeners. If you would like to, you can go to the episode description and here in the episode description, you're going to find that Bookkeep is offering every partner that becomes a Bookkeep partner through Universal one free subscription for the life of that client. So there'll be no more, uh, no monthly fee associated with that client. And basically, to take advantage of this, you just need to go to the episode description and there find the information you need to take advantage of and really benefit from this and learn more about Bookkeep as well. I do want to thank you, Tom, for being on the show. I'm going to come back to you for a closing thought after I summarize sure. some of our conversation here, and then we'll be done. But as a summary, I, I really like today's conversation. Having Tom on, I knew it was going to be kind of a tech discussion. Um, I'm glad we brought up e-commerce. There's definitely an evolution there. I know some people are reluctant and hesitant to get involved with that, at least to go deep. There are so many different e-commerce platforms and integrations that we need to be aware of as an accounting profession. And I hope after listening today, you got some more clarification in your own mind as to whether or not this is something you want to fully embrace or avoid with a, a 10-foot pole. And I don't know which it may be for you as a listener, but opportunity does persist and companies do need this type of service and integration. Uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting is the perspective. Uh, with Tom's background and experience, his history in the accounting profession, I think he definitely sees the value in communities. I know many of us are actually involved in this. I would like to consider you as listeners a part of my community. Where here we're learning best practices, sharing uh, concepts, thoughts that we can implement in our own business, and in doing so, actually become the premier accounting firm. So I hope that as a community, you feel that that's the case. I know that many are also involved in various online groups. I know that people actually attend live events and in doing so have connections with peers that are very helpful. And the same is true for the vendors. There's a number of vendor type communities where they try to 
integrate and get feedback from their users. And I encourage you to participate in these. Uh, you'll find the best practices. You'll be able to make a difference and more importantly, influence a lot of the things going on for your for your benefit, be, just because of the input you provided. So definitely encouraging you to participate and get involved in the communities. They are literally there to help you navigate and improve what it is you're doing. The last thing I'd like to say is with regards to Tom, I appreciated his insights just on this whole idea of, of integration, how to consider what to do next and what to bring into the business, how to assess what it is that's going to be beneficial to the firm or perhaps to the client and so forth. So good little discussion with that. So Tom, what's a closing thought that you'd like to share? Well, I, w I would just say that the, the most important thing you could do to help your business and to help the community is to be involved and get involved. And book, Bookkeep is a, a accountant driven company. Uh, we're, our product manager is a, a CPA where all, most all of us are pro advisor certified. Um, and, and we're here to help the, the accountants and the bookkeepers. So um, we're excited to be on the show today and uh, hope that uh Hope that you take advantage of the offer, but get involved with the community. Help somebody, help yourself, and help everybody. Perfect. Well, Tom, thank you. Obviously, as listeners, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the podcast. There are this and so many other episodes that you can go back and listen to that are in the archives. Each and every week, we're releasing new episodes for you to apply, learn, benefit from in your business. I encourage you to not only subscribe, but listen to past episodes. Go binge a few, and you'll actually find a number of great topics that I'm sure you'll find interesting. In addition to that, I want to invite you to the um, GrowCon event each and every year as a community. We get together, and as a community of peers, learn best practices as to how to run a very profitable, successful accounting business offering accounting, bookkeeping, and tax services. I encourage you to check out GrowCon. There's information for that in the episode description. I also want to suggest that if you have any feedback for us here at the podcast, you can go there to the episode description and find a feedback form. We're just collecting some input from our listeners and would love to hear what you'd like to suggest we discuss, guests that we should consider having on, topics to cover. We'd love to have all that information. But lastly, if there's any information you'd like to uh, discuss, things that you'd like to learn, the, the things that you'd like to know as to how to implement in your business, feel free to reach out to us here at Universal Accounting. You can contact us by phone at 801-265-3777. And you can also visit us online. You can go to universalaccountingschool.com. But with that being said, always remember this. If it's about accounting, it is universal. Take care and have a great day. And I encourage you to listen next time on this, Building the Premier Accounting Firm. Bye-bye.